Hi everybody, so today's demo is going to be on this beautiful braided weave that um, can be used to create bales or in this case a bracelet. Um, it's a really simple weave and beginners can do this as well. Um, it's a great way to get started with um, different types of wire. So I am going to show you quickly what materials we're going to be needing for that. So I'm just going to shift this out of the way. And here we are. So what you're going to be needing for this is your cabochon, obviously. So any size really will do. Um, depending on what you're going to use size-wise, obviously you need to add more wire. Then you've got your most amazing triangular seed beads. They're really nice for adding a little bit of detail, like here you can see around the bale here. So they're beautiful, perfect for that. Um, your 11 O's if you're going to make the bracelet like so to add the most detail then you've got your bronzites and obviously your copper wire so you've got your point eight here and your point four there which is your your weaving wire and then the um the point eight is actually just used to do the braid itself um yeah so that's it so let's go move on to the uh the tools so i'm going to shift that out of the way as well and here we are so this is basically what you need for creating the pendant um, as you can see here so we've got a pen I'm going to demonstrate how to do the actual pendant itself but you can very easily also make the brace with the technique and uh, very simple but if you're going to make the pendant you're going to need a steel block or any surface that you can hammer with you need a hammer chasing hammer will do because that won't mark your wire too much the reason we're going to be using that is to actually flatten the bale around the stone itself then obviously you need simple tools like your chain nose pl pliers and your cutters um, just to help you along with the um, the actual twists and so forth. Um, oh, and actually you will also need your round nose pliers, um, which I'm going to be using later on to do the little twirls. Right, so let's get started. I'm going to shift this out of the way and I'm going to bring in the very first piece that we need for that, which are your wires. I'm just going to set this down. So what we need to actually create the weaving itself, we need six different wires. Okay, and I would recommend to go fairly long with that. Not that you need that length, but the reason being is you get a much neater and tidier braid if you have got more leverage and, and more uh, wires, more length to pull against because you have more force. So I'm going to be using six of those and I have used about 30, 45 centimeters, depending on how long. There's a little bit of wastage with that, but I find you get a much tidier weave if you, um, if you go ahead and do that with longer wire. Otherwise, it's not, you don't have enough length to actually keep the, um, the wire to make it nice and tight. You can see here, so I've got quite a bit of length left. Um, but that enabled me to actually create a braid. So what I've done here, you can see I've already attached my wires to the macrame board. So I'll leave about 10 centimeters or so at the end. And then I've attached the bits and pieces to the, um, to the macrame board. And then the next step is to separate out your wire. So I've got two in each, two for each strand. Straighten them out a bit. Um, and you can add more if you want to have the one to, if you want to have the weave a little bit wider add three or four um, I haven't tried it with this uh, gauge wire yet so I don't really know how difficult it's going to be to weave with but you're very welcome to try and see how it works so the way this works is we're going to take the first one so the beginning is always going to be a little bit less tidy than the rest we're going to take one of the wires and just like a normal braid you fold it over towards the center then we're going to take the second one and bring it in and we're trying already i'm going to shift this down as you can see we're already trying to make sure that these are neat and tidy so i'm going to pull the rest and i'm going to take it and i'm going to pull as hard as i can and as i said the longer the further away i go from the actual braid the better it is so now we're going to come back to the other side fold it over and all the while just make sure that the wires always stay in the same direction parallel to each other. So you're going to bring the outside and pull it as tight as you can. 
And then we're going to repeat, as I said, just make sure that you keep it as neat and tidy as possible. And then the further down you go, the tidier it gets. And always make sure, as I said, that the wires stay parallel. So, next. So this is basically how you would do the weave and just take your time go slow because then you know the more time you take the neater this will actually be in and it'll be quite important to um to make sure that you get um a neat and tidy finish so i'm going to take this off and take out the piece that i have already made um which is So this is the piece that I have already made. So this is what you would be using. So roughly for a gemstone of this size, which is about 25 centimeters, millimeters rather, um, I've done about 11 or 12 of the weaves. So that's one, two, three, four, five, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. All right, so that will roughly fit around a gemstone. So what we're going to need to do now, obviously we've got a good length of wires left. Now, if you don't really want to waste this, um, you can very easily set this aside, cut it off, set it aside, and then maybe make some earrings or jump rings with that wire. So what needs to happen next is take these wires. We're going to keep the center, bend it up, and the outside ones, we're going to trim and fold them in like so. And then we're going to bring in our cutters. And trim these off and then obviously try and make sure that they are nice and flat obviously better than this so you'd fold them around the center wire so that they're nice and flat and you don't actually see them we're going to be doing the same on the other side fold this over cut them off off and then flatten these with your chain nurse pliers and this is what it would look like all right so this is the basic shape and you can see already this would be the bracelet if you were to make the bracelet rather than the actual pendant um, and then you would just make some loops on the end and then use your point four to um, add in seed beads at the end but we are going to make the, the pendant so what we need to do now is give it a basic shape so we're bending it all the while just making sure that it's nice and centered so we're bending it Easy pliers. and i am going to bend these two wires that are left at the top i'm just going to bend them out a bit just that makes it easier to actually shape and you need to kind of create an oval shape that will roughly fit around the stone like so so that's it and then what you would do is you place it obviously this one has gone a little bit bigger so if you see that just check first before you close this will work fine as well because what you can do then next is actually bring in your hammer and your block like so and you would then shape it so I'm going to twist this around, keep it shut. Then all you would do is shape it around the stone, like so. Very gently, obviously, you don't want to damage the stone itself. So shape it. Shape it like so. is great so you can then this should fit like so and then what you do remove the stone and we're just going to take two of the wires at the top and create like a wrap loop one of the wires 
just to close it off like so and this will attach them together so you have your bale here and then you have your two wires at the back so this is what we're going to do so the next step is to actually add in your triangular beads so we're going to have these ones here and i have already made a section here where i have done that and um, because it can can take some time because obviously there's two holes and with the wire it's a little bit complicated to feed it on well not really complicated but it you know because there's kinks in the wire so it feeds on a bit more difficult than it would be on cord so this is what it would look like so what we need to do now is take that bell and we're going to be folding it over then these wires back so you're going to fold it over like so and bring the wires <clears throat> around the front again like so and then we're going to just use these two to fold around the front like so and then they go around the back obviously take your time to make them fit so this is the bale using the triangular beads it's quite effective i really like it because it's definitely something different um i have not seen these before used in in a bale so it's really great to have them in this kit um, and then you would just you can either use these to trim off or i mean you can either use them or you can trim them off depending on what you'd like to do so i'm going to keep one and I'm going to keep one. In actual fact, I'm going to use both of these for detail at the front. So I'm going to cut this one off as well. And I'm going to keep the two longer ones, which are these ones at the back. So what I'm going to do with one of them is take it for the back and one for the front. So I'm going to bring one to the front. And what I'm going to do with this is just create detail little twirls around the front but it's actually better when the stone is in so i'm going to leave that for later so what we need to do is bring in the stone and place it in and what we need to do for the back now is also create little swirls because that will be the backing which will prevent stone from falling out so you're just shaping it make sure your stone fits into the cradle so you're shaping it like so and then this can be trimmed off at the end you can either make a twirl obviously it would be better if you close it off so it doesn't snag on anywhere so this is <coughs> what you would do with this so the next step is to bring in a little bit of your point four. I'm going to open this up. Take a piece. And all we're going to do is attach the point four through the actual frame. Because there's always little holes where the braid is, so the point four should go through. If it doesn't, just use a needle or something else where it can fit through. So just feeding that in. There you go. Use your your tools if necessary to pull it through. Right, so I have finished off and I've attached it a bit more and cleaned it off. And all that's left to do now is actually trim off your weaving wire that you've used to attach the twirls at the back. I'm going to turn it over and then we've got this one wire left at the front. You can have the two if you want to. And all we're going to do with this is a little bit of organic free form swirl making which is one of my favorite techniques because it looks very pretty i think so you can just add swirls in whichever direction you want you can go all the way around the gemstone these ones aren't nice and symmetrical you can make them look much better than this but um yeah you can just you know go whichever direction you want you can make even wire writing over the top if you want to and then all i would do is then take this point 
eight and feed it through the either the frame or you can just use some 1.4 to attach it um, and make it your own really so just make the design suit your taste uh, and see where you go with it uh, and this is how you make this pendant so i really hope you enjoyed this um, and thanks for watching